Hi everybody, tell me if you can hear me, see me, <laughs> not sure, <laughs> I'll just see. Um, I can't see any comments so I'm not really sure if anyone can see or hear me but hopefully someone can. Hi. Hello everyone. I'll just give a couple of minutes to see if anyone can hear me. Hi Vicky. Hi Lisa. Hi Julie. <laughs> Wow, this is going to be an experience. Oh, you can hear me fine. Excellent. Hi. Right, so, the feather world. <laughs> all right, so how it all came about, I'm just going to introduce myself a little bit so you know who I am. Um, my name's Victoria, and I have a small business called Wild Magic, and it's all about um, my intuitive creativity. Um, and it started with a memory I had when I was a child where I did a painting uh, well not a painting like a little tiny ink drawing and I kept seeing this same face so what happened was um, last year I drew that face onto this feather and um, I don't know why I had a sense of Gaia um, coming through and that's when everything started to hit me and I realised that I'm getting some memories that weren't there before and I'm the things that I saw when I was a child that freaked me out and people said there was something wrong with me um, I've now embraced and now I am using that gift within me to um, express and bring through whatever portals that open uh, I'm going to give you a bit of a history um, because the gift that I realised I had is actually quite ancient and I didn't know. I've, I've tried to do research, i tried to find out more about what I could do and if there's anybody else like it and there's very, very few things. And I had a um, session with David and... Um, a moment with Amanda who brought into light and opened up a lot of doors for me because I was able to express what I'm seeing and feeling and from there on it just grew and grew and within that research I discovered that there was a bird goddess um, and believe it or not this bird goddess is way 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 beyond the goddesses you know like the Egyptian god she's older than that she's older than um, the Greek goddess and the like Athens and all that which I just it was just phenomenal to find out who she was um, she fell from the heavens and she's known as the Queen of Heavens so she um, she, she breathed life onto the world, so she fell from the heavens, flowed the surface, created life, creatures, and she welled up from um, the ground. And there are artefacts all around the world that go back 30,000, back to the Stone Age, believe it or not, even beyond. And so therefore that's how old she is, and Isis is part of her. There are a lot, uh, Gaia is part of her, there's so many different goddesses that are part of this bird goddess, which I didn't really know, and it's, it's fascinating me, because I'm thinking, oh wow, this explains why I'm seeing lots of different things. Um, so there are symbols like the chevron, the, the triple, the power of three, um, also um, she... If I show you some of the symbols, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so you've got the meander, which is linked to Bridget. Um, and as you can see, I'm not sure if you heard of the epiphany, but the epiphany stems from the bird goddess, where you have 
your um, arms up like this and there used to be wings and if you look at the artifacts that from the stone ages back then when they worshipped and um, embraced the way living is back then you will see that um, in the back of these little clay models etc and figurines and ivory and um, is it mammoths I think they're, those things are called you will see they carved symbols of her and they had holes in the back where the feathers used to poke out and they used to have them on the altars um, you've got the uh, here you've got the cross people associate it with Christianity it's actually associated with the four directions the four phases of the moon uh, associated from the bird goddess so over 30,000 years old and this is all fascinating the chevron represents the bird, the beaks, the feathers, the mark of the pubic area. Um, and then obviously when you're like this and you, you're amplifying the goddess life force. And the spiral on her breast is the, un, the, the seen and the unseen linked to the other worlds. So there's a little, I, I couldn't explain a bit more. If you want to know about more, just let me know and I can do a nice talk about the um, bird goddess basically is everybody following or am I talking too too fast uh, <laughs> my room is dreaming uh, welcome to my magic cave um, as you can see I've got Nav my snow dragon who comes through visually and she woke up in my magic cave when I first started building it and I had to finish her, her. Um, she's my beautiful little guy i've got my puppets as you can see i've been doing lots of paintings in my feathers so how does it work um i'm not sure if you saw a live video a while ago about portals um i watched it with fascination it hit hard on me because I always saw portals wherever I walked and things used to come through the walls or images appeared and that's obviously how it started when I was a child and it used to freak me out. But when I did this um, very first feather I ever did, I realised that what I was seeing was from my childhood and I remember when I lived up in the mountains I used to stick pentagrams at the bottom of the trees and I didn't really know as much about all of, all of this. It just, it was there in my heart, I just did it. Now I look back, I understand it, that I was naturally a, I don't know, a soothsayer, whatever you want to call it. I've got, I'm not really called a witch, I think a witch is too modern for me. I don't know, but I know I have a word for me, I can't pronounce it, I can see it. It's very old, but when I do get that word, I'll bring it on to you. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is um, my world. I've already cleansed my space. I've tuned into the bird goddess. And um, I'm going to explain. So what happens is I make quills, as you can see. But when you look at um, feathers, the chevrons, all the symbols that go back 30, 40,000 years ago, I mean, you're talking the Stone Ages now, these chevrons appear everywhere and they are to link to the feathers. And if you look at the feathers, you've got the chevrons running through, which symbolises the goddess. You also find connections in the Norse symbology, like rune stones. Um, and as you can see, one of those rune stones here is actually a 30,000 year old symbol called the bird claw. And then when you look at the um, cross, which people say is the gift, it's, um, it's to do with the bird goddess saying the gift of creativity. So it reads, all my little pennies are dropping bit bat, bit bat, bop, bop. <laughs> one by one and I'm thinking oh my goodness and it's like today um I was getting dressed I thought I'll wear my my light my outfit because that's how I feel home in my medieval gear and as I went through the, the house the lights flickered behind me one by one literally my bedroom when I got dressed and I'm thinking hiya I come down the stairs flash 
I'm like, okay. I'm in the living room, flash, and I'm like, wow. So, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. So I, I'm, I'm really chuffed to be sharing this wonderful experience with you. So what happens is I get a feather. So let's see if I can grab a feather. Are you all going to grab a feather? I just want you to grab a feather or something or, or, a, or a pebble or a crystal. Doesn't really matter because they all relate to one another. Just bear with me a sec and I'll grab a feather. Right, so what I do when I'm channeled in, I have um, a feather and I stare into the feather. And what happens is when I look at it, there's like shadows appear and I paint into the shadows. Um, so what, um, it's not something I see in my head, it's something I physically see appear on the feather, which is quite bizarre. I mean, as a child, it was something I used to see. I, I mean, I see it on the toilet and things will start to appear and I'm like, oh, I must paint that. But I can't paint my walls, can I? <laughs> they, you are supposed to be drawing the line. Um, so, yeah, that's how I see it the visions of images appearing and I don't know why but if you look here you can see that you can see the different creatures the shadows so the, the only way I can explain it is when I look into the dark I see light and the lights create images and I'm not sure what how what that means but I had um like a, a um, epiphany an epiphany is not a christian thing it's actually the bird goddess thing it actually means inspired creativity suddenly something hits you and i'm having quite a lot of that frequently to be quite honest with you um so i know i can confirm that this is right because when i did my research i um saw some symbols that i was drawing on on here and i think there's a lady who got one of my earlier ones she bought from me. If you look, I couldn't understand why I was doing these symbols. Some of it looks Norse, like uh, the runes. But then when I looked closer at the runes, I realised the chevrons that were forming, which shows that the bird goddess was coming through. Now, feathers and cloaks. I'm going to bring in cloaks a little bit. Because Freya, we all love Freya, don't we? Freya wore a feather cloak so that she could fly, as she is part of the bird goddess. But when you look at the religions around the world, like all the different goddesses, you've got Isis, um, even um, the Greek goddess Gay, um, what's the other one called? There's so many of them, and they all relate to the bird goddess and what happens is is she you know the the mother maid that the, the the maid the mother and the crone well the bird goddess triple or three was about life death and spirit and what happened is she was split into three because um there was a, a an invasion in the old europe and of course they split up her um her life death and spirit and lots of deities started to come through and lilith was one of them she was um regarded as feared and a dark person that had feathers and she was horrible and that wasn't the case she was part of the bird goddess with the wings that they had uh, she had on her and that was because she associated with death and so that's how all the different deities escalated and manifested over the course of thousands and thousands of years. So fascinating. Um, you'll find evidence in Wales and Germany, believe it or not. So, um, I will see if I can find out more about that for you. Because um, the spirals are what's the unseen. I'm not sure if you've seen the spiral, as you can see. You've got the power of the three in the middle, and that's life, death, 
and spirit. And what that actually means is, um, oh, what was it? You, you, you come from her, all things come from her, which is life. You've got all things return to her in death and you've got all, uh, all spirit things are her, which is quite fascinating. Not sure if I'm making sense to you. I'm trying to be as long as you can because it, it's such a, um, wow, a profound discovery that I never knew and there's very, very little written about it. So I've had to do quite a bit of research. Thank you, Amanda, for giving me your vision of the bird magic because that is how I found many of my answers. And it's given me a platform to go further into the research. So, now let's see if we can have a go. Does, any, does anybody want me to have a go at painting and you have a little look? It doesn't take long, it's literally a couple of minutes. Do you all want to try and channel in? Let me know, because I don't want to bore you guys. <laughs> Is there any answers? You're, you're loving this. <laughs> right, so I've got my um, paints. Now, I am very specific. I bless all my paints so that they're clean and only what messages can come through these paints. And they're metallic. And metallic associated with earth itself, like iron, metal, and things like that. Okay. Right. This... Um, this bird goddess is known as a weaver, a sower. Tapestries come from her as well, hence why there is a link to the cloak, because cloaks are associated with feather law, believe it or not. Welcome to my feather law. Oh, every time this information pops into my head, I'm passing it on, so I'm not a very logical person, but then creative minds are. Aren't logical, are they, really? So let's get this feather. I'm going to choose... Oh, to get my collection of feathers because I believe I'm expected to draw something. There we go. Wow. Welcome to the crow world. Owls are over 30,000 years old in symbols, so keep an eye out in museums for symbols in Egyptology and hieroglyphs, and you will find that the owls came through the Greek and Roman, Romans, Celtics, they all come from the bird goddess because they all had that prior knowledge before farming and civilization came about. She was around before that. They said that um, if you look, the Egyptians believed that the black geese laid an egg on the sea, cracked open, and hence the mother goddess, Queen of Heavens, created the world. So it's fascinating. And I, I tell you what, if you, many people said I've got a unique energy that they feel for me, something that's different. I think I know what that is and that's who she is. She's, she's from a different, whole different new level and I'm so excited to share this. I can, I can feel her very excited to share this with you, to be quite honest. Right, so I have my paintbrushes from my mum. Um, so, fan feather, uh, which is like the representative of feathers. You've got... And tiny little brushes, very tiny little brushes, because my work is very heavy, it's very dinky. It takes patience, and I'm not a patient person, but I seem to have patience for this. So, of course, moon water. We all love our moon water, don't we? Yes, we do. So I have moon water, I dip it a little bit. I've got my metallic paints. Here we go, let's see. Going to chant in a moment. Oh, is it? Might just. Feathers. Now, I might have to tilt this in because 
she's associated with water because she is water that runs through the earth through the cave that explains why i am an old hag in a cave in the earliest memory i have in my regression experience um i think that explains why david was like woo holy moroli here we go so i'm going to put lots of water in and dilute the it's acrylic paint for anybody who wants to know. So, let's see. Listen to the voice of water. Listen to the voice of water. Listen to the voice of water. Okay, let's see if I can get this down. Yeah. Listen to the voice of water. I'm chanting listen to the voice of water because that is the mother god. The mother earth goddess, which is the bird goddess, is that who she was? She, she heals and creates the earth's living creatures. She's not just a water or a bird. But as you can see, which one's going to appear? Listen to the voice of water. There she goes. There she is. Can you see this? Let's see if you can see it just a bit more. Ah, that's more like it. Can you see that? She's appearing. And she's appearing. For some reason, she's on water. I can see the waves coming in. Wow. See, I'm not manipulating any of this. I am guided by what I see. And what's appearing? How's that, guys? Okay. Just so that you can see her. Gorgeous hair. When she's rising, for some reason she's rising out of the sea and the water's flowing off her. That's what I'm seeing. So she's... see her there you go these are when I use my fingerprints when you look at your fingers there are well sometimes lines on them and that is the bird goddess within you we all have a part of her within us, whether it's through Freya, Bridget, because Bridget is known, when you look at the symbol with the square shape spiral, that is called the meander, 
and you will see that throughout history, as far as back as time can tell, on potteries and vases and things like that. So as you can see, the water is pouring off of her. Now, I know you all love the moon in my feathers, so I'm going to be very generous and share how do I make the moon. So, the moon is appearing. You can see the, the moonlight coming through. Can you see that? And then... I can see the moon there. There it is. There you are. Gorgeous, aren't you? There you have it. I'm not sure if you can see that. Do you know what? Thank you. It is the lady that gave the sword. Wow. Now, I had a vision about the lady of the lake. Now, um, I have done combat sword fighting, so let me just go and get it. So as you can see, this is my combat sword fighting um, device. And I spoke to David in my session and I said, there is a lady of the lake. Not many of you know about the lady of the falls. Um, which is to do with Merlin, believe it or not. Merlin was actually, she was Lloyd in Wales. She's actually real. She's not a legend or some imagination. So do look up at Hugh Lloyd. He wasn't the most greatest guy because he was uh, exempt from the witch hunches that went on. And he, he was um, always there trying to ensure that he could combat the magic of witches and he's the one that dealt with the two sisters. There's a, a legend about the two sisters in the, in the pubs that turned into cats. Um, the Lady of the Falls and the Lady of the Lake, I believe, is sisters. But there's a third lady called the Lady of the Sea. And I believe she vanished, the Lady of the Sea, because... I'm hoping to get some research, see if I can find out who she is, because I know she exists, she must do, and I'm writing a book and bringing up the prophecies of her. And the Lady of the Sea is the third sister, and it does make sense, the power of three, the three ladies, etc. So I'm going to track this Lady of the Sea, and um, because she was horrified by the way the men treated the Lady of the Falls and the Lady of the Lake. And as you know, the bird goddess is quite upset of how, how we've manifested over time. And she, uh, the Lady of the Sea vanished and she said she will return. And I can feel her returning and I said to David, the sea will rise again when the earth sighs, when the white raven returns. These are all the signs of the Lady of the Sea returning. So I think the Golden Age is fast approaching because the bird tribes have come to light and I have a lot of connections with the bird tribe because the very first session I had with David and I didn't know who they were, um, he gave me a book called The Rise of the Bird Tribes and I sobbed when I read that book because it made sense to me. It brought my childhood back. It made me realise this is who I am. I am the bird. Um, the bird goddess relates to the bird tribe. It, that's where the legend blossomed. You've got the cow, the um, cow lady who the the red ring. Red is associated with the bird goddess. She is 
that's why you see her painted in red ochre 30,000 years ago when they found artefacts. They found hundreds of them and there is a link to Stonehenge as well because she existed back then. She's just not mentioned in Stonehenge as much because she's more of a, um, a cycle. She's been pulled apart and made to look at all these different aspects of her. Um, so I am going to stop for a minute. So I want to see if you have any questions so far. Does anyone have anything they want to ask me? I'm channeled in, I'm tuned in, I have all this protection around me. There's so much energy in this room, it's amazing. Wow. I mean, I've got all sorts of in, in this room, so feel free to ask. Anyone have any questions? I mean, you can see this picture I have here. I'm not sure if you can see it. But there is a, a red Indian, I believe. You can see she's pouring life through water. And I'm wondering how many of you didn't realise how much you are connected to the bird goddess because she's the very, very, one of the very first deities that ever came about. And it, you have to be an architecture or a historian to try and collect it all because I couldn't understand why the Mayans, the Egyptians, the, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, they all had this bird goddess around and it's a shame that there's not much out there about it because nobody wants to connect the whole world everybody wants to remain that mystery but when i look at the pa cave paintings that are around in all the caves that show proof of the bird goddess it just wow um she's been around a long time and now she's 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 here she's she's waiting to hear everybody <laughs> Um, have is this been interesting enough? It's a bit strumming. Uh, you've all got Mor the Morrigan, you've got Freya, you've got Brigid, all these different, you know, the spirals, Danu, Keridwen, who was um, the spiral, and that's the evidence of the spiral of the bird goddess in Germany, because Germany is with, like, uh, the Vikings and all that kind of thing that came about. The fur up. You've got the old English runes, which look like the Viking runes, um, and then you've got the same with the hieroglyphs. You can see the chevrons and the claws and things like that of the bird goddess throughout all of the languages as well. Uh, that's why eggs are extremely important because the egg cracked open and life created because she came from heaven. So yeah, the bird goddess, the Isis is part of the bird goddess. And when you look at that formation, Zeus did that formation as well. So he acknowledged the bird goddess back then. And for him to honour her in ways, like you say, it all became male dominated towards the end and they all became birds when actually she was a beautiful beautiful gorgeous nurturing mother who created the world so i hope it's been a joy <laughs> not sure how i sound like because i'm deaf as a post and i can't hear my voice but you know I'm <laughs> do you have anything you want to know do you want to know any more about the symbols um if I have a look at any of these symbols, where are they? Oh. Yeah. So here are some of the symbols to share that may hit home for you. If you see this symbol, it means awakens dormant life force. So when you use that in your healing magic or when you want to awaken and you draw this, People danced these symbols in the caves back then, 30,000 years ago. 
and if you look at the stars and the galaxies they form the spirals which also shows the bird god is coming from the heavens if you find this symbol which is in wales you can see that's the power of three in the triple going in coming out and if you know anything about history and you look at the old old 30 like 30,000 years old 40,000 years old I mean this is going back the stone ages now you will see that when you look very closely at the spirals that are drawn in the mammoth ivory and the different um artifacts there are a tiny triple parallel three strikes which is the bird goddess symbol you will also find the owl face like this. Now the owl face goes back before Egyptian times and the Egyptians brought this into their equation with Isis and things like that, which is the owl, and that's why there's so much. If you see the comb, that represents the feathers, but it's also vultures and owls with the oldest bird forms that had um, the connection to the bird goddess. Um, if you look at the chevrons, I, I don't know why I kept drawing symbols with lots of chevrons. I now know why, because they represent the bird um, life. And she's also known as the wheel of life. She set the wheel of life, whether it's farming, um, whether people cultivated, people looked at the four seasons, because when you look at the four directions the four seasons and the four phases of the moon um you will see that it's not a christian thing it's something that's um yes i'll post pictures for you no problem i will post the pictures of all my notes so you know because i gathered this and i thought oh my goodness now i know why i drew that now i know what that symbol means because i remember saying to mandra i'm drawing these symbols and i don't know what they are they're so old that i can't find them online uh but so thank thank you amanda for, the, <laughs> for helping me track it down um so when you do the spiral in the breast if you want to know what that means, that actually means you're amplifying the goddess, which is the bird god. Um, let's see, is there anything else? Have a look. Oh, yeah. And there's the circle with... Um, um, in, a, in a circle, it's a circle within a circle with lots of lines on the outside. That is the owl known as the radiant divine eyes, which is... Oh, even both before Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, uh, Celtic times. So uh, this was before civilization came about. So it's like when tribes were around before royalty and all that hierarchy kind of thing came around. So uh, all things that come from her, life, death and spirit. Life means giving life. Death means regenerate him because when you die you're reborn again. And then spirit, which means you are your energy is unfolding and you are going through a transformation. Alright. Um we have um time to talk about my cloaks. Cloaks were part of the feather law. Um, because cloaks were feathers, worn. Merlin wore feathers, known as you. She wore feathers, pigeon feathers, because pigeons are um, messengers from the mythical world. Seagulls are messengers and they help you on your journey when you go to another dimension or you go through a portal, you take a seagull with you and they will guide you back home. Um, birds of prey are extremely important because they are what you associate with the sun and when you see lots of very old sun energies all the circles and things like that they're actually meaning eagle because the sun is the eagle um, whereas even though the crows in that are important um, the eagle is what they hold regard as to do with the sun energy 
if that's any useful information for you. Um, you might not agree with everything that I have explored. Take what you can, whatever resonates with you, and if anything makes sense to you with what your experience are, I'd be so happy if you could share those stories with me um, as well. Um, if you're looking at smudging, um, people say smudging to do with Native Americans, but actually feathers are around the world, so it doesn't belong to a particular tribe because they all share the same belief in the bird goddess. Like I said, they manifested in different ways. I see a bird tribe, an Indian with the eagles and the crows and the feathers with the feather crowns, Freya in the Vikings with the cloaks, feather cloaks. So now, as you can see, I've uh, I've made this cloak recently, and uh, as you can see, I brought dragon into the world because cloaks are a connection. They um they are a, a personal thing. It's not when when I look at uh, lots of cloaks on the uh, internet, they're just plain cloaks, and they're just um a fashion thing maybe to do with harry potter i don't know but if you look at um all the different old mythologies you will see that there's a lot of cloaks associated to do that and to do with goddess bird goddess listen to the voice of water yes listen to the voice of water i can hear you And it's a protection of it to do with the egg, the cloak, the egg, your protective shell when you do your magic and you manifest inside and then give birth to whatever it is you're trying to create. Happy creativity. I love you all. Thank you for joining me and listening to me. I am open to anything you would like to know. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, it is very much like the medicine wheel. And this is what was so mad. I mean, when you look at... Thank you for that, um, Lisa. I ha I made a um, piece of work that I channeled. And I looked through this. And guess what? It's to do with the um, Mandan Indian tribe. Um, and when I looked into them... They came from Wales. They were uh, the missing Celtic tribe, and they moved. To, they were found in America, and they built some of their um, beliefs and their their way of life. It was exactly the same as the tribe that were the Celts in Wales. So I am so happy this came through to me, and thank you, David, for telling me what this is because I didn't know what it was. Um, and as you can see, I've got the Celtic knots on the back there to honour and respect and say thank you for the Indian tribe that relate to the missing Celtic tribe in Wales. So thank you, Caroline. You've been gifted a few barn owl feathers in your time, usually around the special times, yes. Um... Caroline, you're you're connected to the sea goddess, aren't you? The the sea world, I believe, which may make sense to you because she comes from water, and she fell from the heavens into the sea, came onto the surface of the earth, and that's how creativity came around. We are all connected. Yes, we are. I I. That, I think that explains why whenever I have visions or whenever I, I speak to my mum, I say, Mum, I feel like I'm everywhere at once. I can't, how can you be everywhere at once? I feel the breath, I feel the, the scuttling of the caterpillar. And if you go back far enough, you'd be able to feel all that. So yes, Lisa, you are right. I, I completely agree with you. Does anybody want to have a look around in my magic cave? I mean, I've got my heater, all my little stones up there. I've got a glass cabinet here so I can keep all my feathers clean and safe. 
I've got my besom there. <laughs> that belonged to my son who was a Harry Potter fan when he was 18 months old. And uh, I've stolen that broom and I've kept it for myself and decorated it in feathers. Um, if does anybody want me to talk about the bird goddess in more detail next time or um, give you a healing session and we can all do healing together and I'll show you how you can heal other people using spiritual healing, that's up to you. Let me know if that interests you and we can have a healing session for 15 minutes, 20, half an hour. I'll talk you through how to do that. Um, talk about some of my cloaks if you want to. Whatever floats your boat, my lovely magical beings. You are all magical in my eyes. Such a wonderful thing to share with you, this bird goddess. I can't believe I finally get to get to know her and acknowledge that she exists. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. A healing session. Okay. No problem. We'll, we'll sort that out. I'll speak to Julie about that. Yeah, um, I can show you two different forms of healing. One is hands-on, so I'll, I'll use my mannequin as a dummy, if that makes sense, potentially sitting down, plastic cotton sock. Um, and then I'll show you how to do the absent healing as well, if you want to. No problem. A healing session, yeah. Healing's one of my biggest request that I have so yeah I'll definitely do the healing did you enjoy my painting was it a bit okay <laughs> does anybody want it I mean I'm quite happy to post it I don't know who this is relate to but it's relating to one of you there's so many of you out there yeah all right then I'll, I'll try and do some more talks and any um magical journeys i will see if i can bring that into the light as well if that makes sense because obviously there's i'm not sure maybe talk about portals in in the elements of how i see visually things maybe that would help in with my cloak talk if that makes sense how i visualize and see things create for example when i open this if i stare into this magical creatures appear onto this velvet um and i can explain a little bit about portals don't be frightened of it if, if you know what i mean because you'll see things because they're all there to help you and talk to you is, is there anything else you would like me to talk about or shall we just call it a day i mean there's, there's one last little thing I want to share with you. Let me just find it. Aha, here it is. Before I go. Now, when I was, oh, when I was um, looking at things, you know how I see I, I see things appear. Um, I've noticed that the birds are appearing in stones as well. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah. As I can see, there's a uh, the bird's bodies here and I can see the wings in flight if I look this way you can see I'm not sure if I can see if I can show you this but if you look at here you can see the wings in flight you can see the body and the other wing here so you can see the birds appearing you should be able to see this yourself you should be able to see the birds inside the moss gate is it Mossa Gate? Yeah, it is Mossa Gate. Um, when I was in a crystal shop, in a, a witch shop, I randomly picked up a um, obsidian, put it in my pocket because I needed a bit of protection. And when I looked at it, it was the shape of a bird's head. And if you look at the triple spiral, that is the bird goddess bird head because there's lots of birds that have... Um... Yeah, it is gorgeous, isn't it? I don't know who this benefit is. Very lightweight, it's not heavy. So this is not a heavy cloak. This is a summer cloak. 
it's nice and light so that you can wear it and then that way if you're out and about in bell time and all that kind of thing you won't feel as though it's uh, a lug heaviness to carry around if you decide to remove it as well. Um, not sure what I'm going to do with this one. Let's just have a look. Oh. oh. I had um, Gaia, my buddy, uh, so I'm not sure what's going to happen with this, but it's going to be a massive piece of foliage of greenery with mushrooms coming out of it and things like that so I'm not sure where this is going but as you can see the fairies are in there Quir quills ah before I go I just remembered there was a request about quills when you are with your feathers you can wash them now I know you're going to think oh washing Wash feathers, that will destroy them. No, I actually use fairy liquid. No, washing up liquid. Froth it up. Let the bubbles sit on the top. Do a little bit of that and stroke it. Keep stroking it. Maybe a cloth or something over the top and it will wipe them clean. Also inside the shaft, if you take the end off, you can draw out the inner side of the feathers as well and you've got nice clean feathers even peaky looking feathers can be rejuvenated to look their better selves so if they look a bit wet you can um joy is that amanda no amanda's got her cloak now she's got the sea cloak i believe if amanda wants to share that um this one is the fire dragon cloak i don't know why but fire dragon comes through which is why you've got the purple spirit and red for the fire dragon the fire sun dragon hence why the dragon is sitting on a rock basking under the moon and in the sun with the flames i've painted these flames on not I don't, i'm not too sure that's a bit ott but a lot of people love the fact that this is fire coming through because it's my art is not about being perfectionist, it's about being artistic. I mean, thank God, does that look like an actual painting? So, yeah, this definitely create uh, get a sense of the desert, if you know what I mean. So, going on, this is a very, um, this is a very nice dragon. Uh, so, as I was saying about washing the feathers, um, you can wash them in washing up liquid, let them dry. Some people stick them in a the dryer. I wouldn't recommend sticking them in the dryer. And then you can weave around. Now, if you are not sure what to weave here with the feathers, um, I use wax feathers. The reason why I use wax threading for the feathers why did I say wax feathers? Wax for the feathers, get my words right, is because of the candles. When you look at the candle, what colours associated with what energies or intentions that you're trying to use, if that makes sense. So it's not to make it look pretty, it actually has an intention because I will, if you think about um, geese were the first creatures on earth, and they, the reason why the bird goddess is sacred and birds are sacred is because feathers carry water across the world and food in their feathers, believe it or not. So you've got birds eating life, pooping out life, creating life on earth. And hey presto, a tree forms up, a plant um, springs up and water in its feathers flicker it onto the ground and it... it starts the process of life so now you can see why she's the queen of heavens and she's associated with water because she breathes life into earth so there you are you can use these wax threads to thread around so if i look at this one because she comes from the water i've got blue here and i literally 
I um, let me just cut a piece off. Let me get my feathers from up there. So I cut the piece, I fold it in half like this, and then I tie a knot. There you go. And then you just tie it. Now, um, if you are interested in the nine feather, the, the nine knots, that, you know you have the nine knots, you've got the nine feathers. If you find on um, nine different feathers, you can create a feather ladder. If you light a white candle and you've got your nine feathers, uh, I'll have to show you a picture because I didn't bring it in here because I have it in my room because it's my healing um, piece. Um, if you look at the knot, the crossover, when you cross over the thread, you've got the crosses of um, the four directions, the four seasons, the four. So that symbolises why the Indians cross over on their feathers as well. If you have a loved one that's passed over, your, you can create a nine feather ladder for them, get a white candle, write their name on it or carve their name, light it, think about them, reminiscing and how you feel, etc. as a person that's passed away. And then you get a candy, put it in the middle of the feather ladder and basically you're making their journey sweeter up into the heaven to return back. And you can keep that um, ladder for nine months. I don't know why nine months. Maybe it's the power of three, three times three. And you've got the nine months. And then that's you setting that time, your grieving time to process and help them on their journey. If that makes sense. Um, so yeah, the, the feather ladder is uh, really important. I do plan to make some for you. So if you do want some feather ladders, I will post you some, a picture of mine. Because you have to thread three different colours, which is red, black and uh, white for the go triple goddess, for those that want that one. Or you can go blue, silver and white for the healing process, which is what I do for healing that makes sense because each different colors represents different things for for feathers if that makes sense um i think we've got one more minute left have i covered everything um if you don't want to use the wax feathers um you can use suede string which is nice and it makes it thicker so you get a better hold on your pen and then you just buy um calligraphy tips to add to the end if you want calligraphy tip um but some of them is it this one or that one where is it where are you my little flower where did i put it i know i've got a pen somewhere not there You, some oh here it is some feathers you can actually poke if you just want a normal pen you can write um some feathers can actually push this inside the actual feather itself and then you can just write with a normal pen by row so thank you very much it's eight o'clock now i've just spent an hour zapping my head off <laughs> It's been a pleasure talking to you all. Um, if there's any questions or you want to PM me, then feel free. Thank you so much, everybody. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Bye-bye.